نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We seek his assistance and we seek his forgiveness And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of our souls And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of our actions Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide, no one can misguide and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves astray, no one else can guide. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. Amma ba'd. We should be here standing or sitting here praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to reach this day. Allowed us to witness this Ramadan Allowed us to witness this first Friday of the month of Ramadan For witnessing Ramadan is a great blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us And it is a great blessing that he bestows upon his slaves We know people that witnessed last Ramadan with us Yet that was their last Ramadan And they will, they will never be able to witness another Ramadan But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose us to witness another Ramadan as another opportunity to increase in our good deeds, another opportunity to have our sins forgiven, and another opportunity for us to be freed from hellfire. Most of us know the story of when there were two Sahaba, and they became Muslim together. One of them passed away in, as, as a shaheed in the battlefield, and his friend passed away one year later. Their third friend saw in a dream that the one that passed away one year later entered Jannah much earlier than the one that died on the battlefield. He was very surprised and when he asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what's strange? Did he not witness another Ramadan, another Lait al Qadr? Did he not have a whole year of performing sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many sajjahs did he perform in that year? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is no strange thing that a person who lives longer witnesses another Ramadan that this person has a much higher status in Jannah and enters Jannah first. So it's a great blessing that we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for allowing us to witness the month of Ramadan. And the reason we thank him is because the blessings and the reward associated with Ramadan are great. The rewards associated with fasting are great and we need to take these rewards because they're not there for anyone. Or not anyone manages to take these rewards because many people miss out on them. Firstly, let's remind ourselves of the reward of fasting. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us in a hadith Qudusi that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, كُلُّ عَمَلِ بْنِ آدَمَ لَهْ إِلَّا الصَّوْمْ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِيبِهِ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, every action a son of Adam does is for him. Except fasting, it is for me and I shall reward for it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala saying fasting is for him and he shall reward for it. One of the reasons for that, it's because when a person does acts of worship, he may do them in a way that people think, he, he, because in fasting he can trick others that he is fasting. With other acts of worship, you can't trick someone that you're praying. You, ha you have to do it anyway. You have to go through the effort anyway for people to think that you have prayed. For you to give to sadaqah, you have to go through the effort. People have to see you giving the sadaqah. But for fasting, you can easily trick people. They, can see, you can, they, they won't be monitoring you from suhoor until futur to see if you have eaten or not. So you can easily trick people, but the reason that a person stops himself 
and does not eat even though no one is watching him is because of his fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A fear that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that most of us lack or that many of us lack throughout the year, but we have it in Ramadan. And that is why it is a great reward. And we have it when we are fasting, because when we are not fasting, we do sins, although we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at us. But when we are fasting, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at us, no one else is, yet we refrain from food and drink because of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why it is an, it's an action that is associated with sincerity. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it said it is for him and he shall reward for it. And the, and the conclusion of that, it's not just a statement, it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he shall reward for it. There is an effect to that. The effect of that is that on the day of judgment, people, after subhan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges between the people in terms of what the, the right that they've had towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then after that, there will be a stage where people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge between the people in terms of the rights that they had against each other. Because if you harm someone, you may have committed a sin and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you, he may forgive you. But the person you have harmed, if he does not forgive you, then he can take his, 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 his then he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow him to take what he, what he deserves to take back on the day of judgment. And the only thing, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he mentioned in the hadith, the only currency on the day of judgment is, is actions. He will either he will take from your good deeds or he will give you from his sins. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he spoke about this, he said that a person will come and he will have backbitten this person, he would have swore at this person, he would have harmed this person, and then they will anyone who is harmed, they, they will he will give they will take from his good deeds. Take from his good deeds until and he has no more good deeds, there's nothing else for them to take, then they, they give him their sins. That's why it's very, very important for us that we do not oppress anyone in this dunya and whoever we have oppressed to ask them to forgive us now because they will never ever forgive you in the Day of Judgment. When they see the, the, the trials and the horrors and the terrors of the Day of Judgment, no one will forgive anyone. They will want to take any good action that they, want, that, that they can. So they will want to take from your good deeds. But as, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, fasting is for him and he shall reward for it. On that day when they take from your good deeds, the good deeds you get from fasting, they will not be able to take. That is a reserve bank that you have that no one can take. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it is for him. And no one can take from that. So the reward that you have for fasting will remain. Even if people take all your good deeds, they cannot take from the good deeds of fasting. And that is why we need to ensure that the reward we get for fasting is great. Because the two people may fast and they won't get the same reward. There was no specific reward mentioned for fasting. Because it, it, it varies from person to person, the effort that they put, and also what they refrain from doing. And that is how they get higher rewards. So we need to ensure that we get great reward for our fasting. And to ensure we do that, we need to understand that there are levels when it comes to fasting. Imam al-Ghazali mentioned, he said there are three levels when it comes to fasting. The lowest level is the level when a person fasts from food, the drink, and intimacy throughout the daylight hours. That's all he does. Many of us will think, this is what fasting is about. This is the obligation only of fasting. This is not the, this is not the fasting that is associated with the good deeds. This is the obligation. You do this, you have fulfilled the obligation, and you will not be held to account for this on the day of judgment for not having fasted. But did you get good deeds? That is dependent on what you have done elsewhere what you have done otherwise in your, in your fast. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَن لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً فِي أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابًا Whoever does not leave false speech or acting upon it, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is in no need for this person to leave his food and drink. I.e. if you are fasting, but you have false speech, and false speech, i.e. something that is haram, saying things that are haram, such as lying, such as backbiting, you do that whilst you are fasting. And you have false actions, i.e. actions that are haram. You hit others or you act upon that which is haram. You do that when you are fasting, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in no need for you to leave your food and drink. I.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want your good deeds. Does not want to give you good deeds. Does not, does not want your fasting. He's in no need for this fasting that you have done because you have not fasted as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Yes, you have refrained from food and drink, but you have missed out on the purpose of fasting. So a person needs to make sure that they fast from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made haram. 
not just from food, drink, and intimacy throughout the daylight hours, but also from everything else that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made haram. If they don't do that, then they risk getting zero rewards for their fasting. This reserve bank you want to have on the day of judgment where no one can take from, you end up having zero in that bank because all you have done is stayed away from food, drink, and intimacy, and nothing else. So a person needs to aim, aim higher. Aim for a higher level of fasting. This first level of fasting, the only the thing that it does for you is that you are not held to account on the day of judgment for not having fasted. You have, you, are, you have fulfilled the obligation, but you have missed out on the reward. The second level and the higher level is a person who fasts from this, from the obliga- with the obligation, from food, drink and intimacy, but he also fasts with his body. He fasts with his eyes, stay, uh, abstaining from haram. He fasts with his hands, they abstain from haram. He fasts with his tongue by abstaining from haram. Fasting with his ears by abstaining from haram. This is a higher level of fasting. And this is what a person needs to try to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe fasting has been prescribed for you like it has been prescribed for those before you so that you may attain piety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say so that you can be hungry. Fasting is not for you just to be hungry. No, it is for you to attain piety. If you only stay away from food, drink and intimacy, then all you've done is just become hungry and thirsty. You haven't attained piety. Fasting is for you to abstain from things that are haram as well. That is the purpose of fasting. And when you fulfill the purpose of fasting, that is when you get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person needs to stay away from anything that is haram during the daylight hours and and, and throughout their whole lives for them to ensure that they get the reward for fasting. And then the highest level of fasting of of, of a fasting person is a person who stays away from all of that. And on top of that, his thoughts are only about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are about the hereafter. And his heart is only thinking about the hereafter. About pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not thinking about what they're going to have for iftar. Not thinking about what they're going to do this. Or they, what they're going to do now or then or after taraweeh or this. All they are thinking about is how do I please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who fasts like this has achieved the highest level of fasting. And this person achieved the most reward in terms of their fasting. And that is the level that we would need to try to achieve. Because fasting actually linguistically means to abstain from something. Fasting, psalm in the Arabic language means to abstain from something. And this person has abstained from everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He abstained from everything other than pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more you abstain from this stuff, the more reward you get for your fasting. So these are the three levels of fasting and we need to try and achieve the higher levels of fasting so that we can be from those who are rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from those who all they get from their fasting is hunger and thirst and that's all. فأقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد for us to try and achieve these higher levels of fasting, we need to look at them in more detail. So let's look at the second level. The things that we said a person needs to fast with his limbs. So take these limbs, look at your feet. Fast with your feet. How does a person fast with his feet? He ensures these feet, they only take him to that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These feet, they don't walk to haram. They don't drive the car towards the haram. They only walk towards the masajid. They walk towards the places that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the bookshelf to pick up the Qur'an. When a person does that with his feet, his feet only take him to that which is halal. This is how a person fasts with his feet. A person can fast with his hands, such as these hands do not touch that which is haram. They only touch that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't touch anything haram, they stay away from that. But they do the things that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They hold the Qur'an. They they allow a person to do things that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They move in tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is how a person can fast with his his hands. A person can fast with his eyes by ensuring these eyes, they don't look at haram. Alhamdulillah, we are blessed so far in this month in that the weather hasn't been very hot like it was in previous years. But a person, there are many other opportunities for a person to look at haram on the television or anything like that. So a person needs to make sure these eyes 
they don't look at haram particularly whilst a person is fasting so that he ensures he is really fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these eyes they don't look at haram they don't witness haram all they look at is things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they look at the Quran they look at a person's parents and, and family and spouse and children in, 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 a, in a pleasing way with a smile to bring happiness to them and as an act of charity and towards brothers in an act of charity this is what these eyes do and the mouth does smiling and being pleased and being peaceful with others that is how a person really fasts with their limbs that's how a person can fast with his eyes a person can also fast with his ears to ensure that these ears they don't listen to haram they, that these ears all they listen to is things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they listen to the recitation of the Quran they listen to Islamic reminders they listen to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they listen to things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't listen to haram they don't listen to gossip they don't listen to backbiting a person shouldn't be involved in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about those who witness gatherings in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his verses are mocked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about not about those who say this about those who sit in those gatherings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says innakum idam mithluhum verily you are just like them if you are there listening to something that that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't speak out against it or at least walk away from it then you have also you it is as if like you have committed this as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said innakum idam mithluhum verily you are like them so you need to make sure that especially in Ramadan as well as, well as outside of Ramadan that you, you don't listen to, to, to conversations that involve haram conversations that involve swearing conversations that involve backbiting conversations that involve uh, gossip especially gossip which is very easy which is widespread in this community and this society a person makes sure that he doesn't involve himself in that particularly if he's fasting if you can't stop people just walk away make sure that these ears become pure and are continue to be pure in this blessed month and also outside of this blessed month brothers please try to move more to the side to allow everyone to come in we'll have more people coming in please try to move more to the side and come closer together From the other things that a person can do to ensure that he fasts with his limbs and this is a very important one is to fast with his tongue this is a very important thing this the tongue Abu Bakr radiallahu an, the best of humans after the prophets he would hold his tongue and he would say this mahalik. this is the thing that, that is sending me to destruction this is Abu Bakr radiallahu an. so how about us he said it's a, it's a limb that every day the actions every day all the limbs they say to the every morning they say to the tongue fear Allah with us because people commit a lot of sins with their tongues so this is the opportunity for a person to practice his fasting and it fast, fasting with the tongue that the tongue does not indulge in anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you do not swear that you do not say haram that you do not backbite that you do not uh, in, indulge in gossip or anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on top of that that you are only remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this tongue you are using this tongue to say subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar you are using this tongue to recite the Quran you are using this tongue to enjoin the good and forbid the evil a person who is like this he fast, he truly fasts with his tongue and he truly fasts with his limbs not only that but he even abstains from things that are not haram but bring no benefit are you indulging in conversations that bring no benefit or with his eyes staying away from watching the football matches or anything else like that you are not in sin if you do that but this is fasting fasting is abstaining this is where you practice to abstain from things so that you can continue for the rest of your life abstaining from things that bring you no benefit when a person looks at fasting what a person actually does in fasting in terms of the obligation is that he stays away from the essence of life he stays away from food, drink, and intimacy, i.e., from, from food and drink to stay alive and from reproduction. These are the things that keep life going. And a person is practicing that he is staying away from the essence of life. That is what he practices while he is fasting. So he can then, after that, 
it, it becomes easy for him to stay away from things that are from the complementary matters, such as watching, watching the football or indulging in conversations about things that bring you no benefit. A person who pra should practice now in Ramadan to stay away from all of that and make sure that he truly fasts with his limbs. And this is how a person achieves this second level of fasting. And the, and the third one, like we mentioned, is, is, is to fast with your heart and with your thoughts. Are you throughout your whole day, all you are thinking about is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When am I going to recite the Quran? What am I going to do that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are things that what are the things that I'm going to learn today? What are the good deeds I want to increase in doing today? That is all you are thinking about. Not thinking about food, not thinking about uh, play or entertainment or anything like that, only thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do that and you have really, really fasted. And this is how you can be from those who get a great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to their fasting. Because like we said at the beginning, the fasting is not just, it's, it's not, it's not, there is no equal reward for fasting. There's no specific reward mentioned. It is based upon how well you fast. And fasting means to abstain from things. It, it is based upon how well you abstain from things that are not necessary. Because you have fulfilled the obligation by staying away from things that are necessary, now is the time to fulfill, to, to, to do more, to do what is required and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you and to do the purpose of fasting, which is to stay away from the things that are not necessary. And that is how you achieve piety. That is how you achieve the purpose of fasting, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated this fasting. And when a person fasts like this, he gets a great reward and then it is no surprise why the person from the Sahaba who died one year later entered Jannah much earlier than the one that died in the battlefield is because this person witnessed a Ramadan. Witnessed a whole month where he fasted like the Sahaba would fast. Fasted with his limbs, with his heart, with his mind, with his thoughts, with everything. Only focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reward for that is immense. Imagine a generous person telling you, I'm going to reward you. That's you know he's going to give you something good. He's not going to give you something small. What about Allah Al-Kareem when he says, أجزيبي, and I shall reward for it. Specified, and he said, fasting is for me. It's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he shall reward for it. It must mean that there is a great, great reward associated with it. Only if we can fulfill the purpose of fasting and be from those who really fast as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them to fast. And on that note also, fasting is a, is a training ground for us. So we shouldn't, we know we are st we're staying away from food and drink for the daylight hours. We shouldn't, when it comes to iftar, overindulge in eating and eat too much. As if to make up, we are there to make up for the missed uh, food that we, ha we didn't have. We should have it as, it as it is one meal, as a meal you would have. Not overindulging in eating and all you're thinking about is what you're going to eat. Because then how have you fulfilled the purpose? The purpose is to train you that you don't need this. What you have done is that you have trained yourself is that you can wait for this. You've only trained yourself to wait, not to abstain. And that's not what fasting is. Fasting is training you to abstain. So make sure that you, or when it comes to iftar, you don't overindulge because you then get used to this and all you're thinking and you're, you're looking forward is to eating. And then you are used, you, you are, you, all you've done is trained to wait, not trained to abstain. You do that with food and drink and then you, become, then you be, are able to do that with others. So that the, thing, the other things that we said you must fast away from, you must fast and abstain from, you can do that. You, you train yourself, no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm waiting so I can commit the sin later, no, I'm abstaining because I don't need to do this. Or I'm abstaining because I don't need to do, even if it's not a sin, I'm abstaining because I don't need to do this action. So with that, a person achieves the highest levels of fasting. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting, to allow our fasting to be sincere for his sake. To allow us to have the highest levels in fasting. To allow us to achieve the greater levels in fasting. And to allow this Ramadan to be a Ramadan where we are forgiven. And a Ramadan where, where we are freed from hellfire. And a Ramadan where we are raised in ranks. And to allow us to witness Laylatul Qadr. And to be from those who increase in good deeds in Laylatul Qadr. Good deeds that are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فأقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولساء المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه غفور رحيم وصلي اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين